Hi everyone, and welcome to Biology Professor. Today we're talking about endospore stains. Now biologists can use a variety of differential stains to distinguish between and identify different types of bacteria using a light microscope. These include gram stain and acid fast stain, both of which are very popular stains. If you're interested in learning more about them, see my videos on those two stains. Another type of stain is the spore stain, and there are a couple of different methods for staining endospores. Remember that endospores are tough, dormant, non-reproductive structures that certain types of gram-positive bacteria form during harsh environmental conditions. If you're interested in learning more about endospores or the process of forming endospores called sporulation, see my videos on those topics. Now, the spore stains both start the same way, with heat fixing a sample to a slide. This is when you have placed the sample on a microscope slide, and then you just pass the microscope slide through a Bunsen burner flame. This helps the bacteria in the sample to adhere to the slide so they don't get washed off during later stains. The next step is to add carbofuchsin. This is a red dye. And at this point, the carbofuchsin will stain everything in the sample. So endospores, vegetative cells, everything. But the next step is very important for getting the stain to actually stick with the endospores. Remember that the spore coat is very tough, it's very impervious to chemicals, and so in order to make that stain actually stick to the endospore, you have to do one of two things. You can either steam the slide, This means leaving the slide over a source of steam, like a hot water bath, for three to five minutes. If you don't want to do that, you can also use some kind of surfactant or detergent. This will disrupt the spore coat enough to allow the stain to adhere, although it certainly won't kill the endospore. Next, you rinse with acid alcohol. The acid alcohol will cause the stain to leave the vegetative cells, but still adhere to the endospores. So at this point, the endospores can be visualized under a microscope. However, it is a good idea to use methylene blue as a counterstain. This means that the second dye won't cover up the carbol fuchsin red dye that stains the endospores, but it will stain the other vegetative cells. And of course, the endospores will still be red. So with a stain like this, you can see red endospores, you can see blue vegetative bacteria, you can even see bacteria that are in the process of forming endospores. So that is the molar spore stain. The Schaefer-Fulton spore stain is very, very similar. It just exchanges some stains for others. For example, in the Schaefer-Fulton method, instead of using carbofuchsin, you use malachite green which stains the endospores green. As a counter stain, you can use safranin. Instead of methylene blue, safranin will stain all of the vegetative cells pink. So it's just a different way of visualizing endospores. So that is it for this video on endospore stains. I hope you learned a lot, and thanks for watching.